Roman Kaloshianek. What about you as a Scientologist? What did you expect to be the end goal? I get the idea that you want to go clear and become an OT8 and break the cycle of forgetting your previous lives and obtain powers to control MEST, but then what? From what I gather, Scientologists believe LRH did not die but assumed a state of being where he could willfully discard his body. Am I correct in assuming that is the end goal of all Scientologists? Does a cleared OT8 Thetan who has discarded its body spend the rest of eternity without a body? Or does a cleared OT8 Thetan look for a new body with the expectation that memories of previous lives and the ability to control MEST are retained? It's a good question, Roman, um, because it, it actually made me like really think about my time when I was in Scientology and what sort of things did I have in mind. I never even got to the OT levels when I was in. I only got up to the level of clear. And my, the best, the best, and the, the, the most I could ever imagine when I was a Scientologist was that I would attain some state of being where I would be godlike. Um, I know, I, th I believe like in the Mormon tradition, it's, it, you know, you get your own planet or something and you get your own followers and you become like God. Uh, I didn't quite have that idea. I didn't want my own planet with a bunch of followers worshiping me or something. That wasn't really what I had in mind. I thought that, actually, I, th I thought that I would attain this high level of, of existence and being this where all of my questions would be answered. Every mystery of life would no longer be a mystery. I would understand everything when it came to where I came from, where everybody came from, what life is at, at, its, at its real core, where, you know, where does it come from, what's it all about, why are we here, where are we going. I, I expected answers to all of these questions, and I thought that they would be on the OT levels, which was one reason I was so unbelievably pissed when I read what was on the OT levels and saw that it didn't have anything to do with answering almost any of these questions. Uh, you know, very, very brush off and very, very not at all what I was looking for. And I didn't want to just get the idea of, I mean, I wanted answers to all of the stuff that, uh, that happened in the past, even if it was in the distant, distant, you know, trillions upon trillions of years in the past as to where we came from. But I also wanted answers as to, you know, well, where are we all going? Because we could, if you can do anything, Maybe there's another plane of existence or another place to be that is not just this place. And I couldn't, I'd think about it and think about it, and I couldn't quite conceive of what, what would that even be like? What would existence be like if it didn't consist of, of moving through time in a world of matter and energy, right, and space? I, I couldn't really conceive of it. I kept thinking and thinking about it. Um, but I, but it, what I, but the common thread or the common denominator for me of what I expected to get out of all this was once I had answers to everything that I'd ever wondered about that was, you know, of, of any importance, would be how could I then turn around and, and, and use my powers or abilities to then um, lead future lives with bodies here in the, in the physical universe or the messed universe so that I could help others get out of it. Because uh, Hubbard uh, said, and I believed, that you know, if we don't all make it, then none of us make it. Right? It's not just you know, somebody gets to the top and flits off and you never see or hear from them again. It was supposed to be that you get to the top of the bridge and then you turn around and you, you, know, you get everybody else pulled up to the top of the bridge. And that was my goal. So I figured I'd be involved with what was going on here for a very long time. Uh, here on planet Earth, and then, you know, on other planets, other civilizations here in this universe. I mean, it's a, if you start thinking the thought through, it becomes this tremendous job. I mean, just trying to think with the numbers of, of clearing Earth, I started running those numbers in the later years of my time in the Sea Org and realized that we were not approaching anything even, re, even remotely close to the kind of numbers we were really needing to hit in order to achieve planetary clearing this lifetime, right? It was like, yeah, that's, mm -mm, we're not even close. 
And, uh, and in the last year that I was in, I started actually openly even discussing that with some other Scientologists who didn't really want to hear it. And then when I asked them about it, hadn't really done the math or, or figured it out. And we're just kind of running on automatic, you know, on autopilot as far as being Scientologists and where they were going. I don't know that a lot of Scientologists really think about this a lot or try to figure out where it's all going. Um, they have this goal of, you know, total spiritual freedom and personal immortality. And, and I think that, that those kind of, uh, you know, I guess maybe you could call them thought-stopping cliches. <laughs> you know, there's these sort of ideas of infinite wisdom and infinite knowledge and infinite ability are just so inconceivable to people that they kind of go, well, I'll deal with it when I get there, but right now I got to pay my bills and, and get my next intensive of auditing and, and figure out how to, uh, you know, uh, deal with my taxes as well and, and uh, whatever is, else is going on in their life or their job or whatever, right? That's kind of where their attention is, tends to stay focused. I found myself uh, in asking these kind of questions or looking at this kind of stuff when I was in Scientology to be kind of a high-level thinker on that subject. Uh, I didn't run into too many other people who'd really given it a whole lot of thought. So I guess that's, uh, I guess that's all I can say on that.